What is this? Good evening. As you can see, I'm currently in Tatev. Why from Tatev? And why am I conducting my interview with Ruben Vartania from here? Because this place has symbolic meaning, a few of them. In a couple of kilometers from here, we already have the start of Berzor Corridor, which has been blockaded it for 250 days now and this direct video conference from here with Artsakh is just a reminder that if we lose Artsakh the second is going to be Sunik and thirdly David Beck and Karagin Nezde started their victorious campaigns from here not only preserving part of our um, motherland but also to prove that if you fight you can preserve uh, the motherland and be victorious so this interview is to show that there is uh it is meaningful to fight and it doesn't have any other alternative ruben vartanian is going to join us from besieged artsakh good evening mr vartanian good evening i would like to Great you. Mr. Vartanian, first of all, I would like to apologize uh, to those who are following us live uh, because we initially announced that we would have the interview at six at seven o'clock, but because of the power cuts in Artsakh, we had to move it a bit earlier for those who do not speak armenian very fluently we should note that there is english spanish and russian interpretation and they can go to the tools bar and select the interpretation channel at the moment in london it is 15 in buenos aires it is 11 o'clock and my first question to you is what's going on in artsakh mr vartanian what's the situation like in the republic you know that the recent weeks led to a more aggravated situation for all. The situation has exacerbated in relation to food and fuel. And generally speaking, the situation is aggravating day by day. On the other hand, I can freely frankly state that regardless of the dire situation, people continue to lead their everyday life, which, of course, leads to profound respect because regardless of the dire situation, people are come together, they try to mutually support one another and this gives a lot of hope that regardless of all the challenges people in Artakh are ready to struggle not to fight with not only to fight with uh, weapons in their hands but also to fight for the right to life in their motherland and of course the situation is going to be more difficult because winter is coming and this is going to lead to more serious issues and we all can realize how serious the situation generally is on the other hand the majority of these people do not feel despair mr vartanian yesterday you issued a statement to the compatriots, scandalous in its nature, and you were addressing this to the president of Artsakh Republic, and there was quite a lot of commentary in this regard and interpretation. Many are asking, is this the best time to have domestic political debate and the others are saying that Ruben Robertanian was fired from his position by Are Kartunyan and he is now angry with the president. Can you please give us commentary why you needed to make that statement? This is quite a difficult question because truly when you are in blockade it is really important to be unified and to have solidarity in order to succeed and to be victorious but we have actually come down to the point when we cannot afford taking half steps we need to decide internally we need to make the final decision if we really prepare ourselves understanding everything to try to somehow unite 
our forces in order to fight in the given situation without a leader, without leaders who are supposed to assume full responsibility, we would see that it is impossible. And I believe that it is a bit surprising to speak about certain positions in this situation when every day you are solving everyday issues of mere bread, water, medication. And if anyone here is speaking about the position, then my assumption is that this person is either stupid or has uh, an agenda that he or she is pursuing, because this is a situation when we should all make a decision on, and this is the critical situation, this is the crisis. Uh, we need to answer very important and difficult questions, and my statement was about something really specific, that without ideas, without value-based concepts, without restoring trust amongst ourselves, we will not be able to succeed, and the enemy is pressurizing us and intimidating us day by day and they're trying to bend our determination and preparedness to confide and trust in each other and in the given situation the confidence is the basis is the foundation for the uh, next steps because the idea without an action is pointless an action without an idea is dangerous so the idea is the basis and in the given situation, people have clearly provided answers to three questions. They do not want to leave Artsakh. The population does not see its future outside and beyond Artsakh. They do not want to be subjugated and they do not want to become part of Azerbaijan. They do not see their future as Azerbaijanis or Azerbaijanese citizens. And they have a lot of concern in relation to the uh, resumption of hostilities and having new victims. And this is the answer that we have already formulated. And we need as leaders, as people who have more sophisticated knowledge of the situation, should be able to conceptualize our upcoming steps. So because we are really facing a situation when the answer to all three questions is no. And then what's the solution in the given case if all the answers are no, are negative? And I believe that the discussion on these issues and in order to arrive at psychological peace among people and to provide them answers uh, to conduct discussions, if this is the situation, what are we going to do and how we're going to do it is really important. Unfortunately, my um, statement was on matters that had to do with this trust of, uh, that should bring us together around the same table to look into each other's eyes to turn the page of the past and to say in this difficult situation let us try and survive it and then we'll come back and then we'll look at back at the past to see who has done what before the war during the war after it and that's really important it's not just important for the leadership of the country it's really really important from the perspective of religious cultural as as well as street leaders, because everyone should realize that time has come when we should come together, sit around the table, understand the situation, and try to answer very difficult questions, finding answers to them. Uh, Mr. Vartanian, you believe that President Haritunian has to be consistent and he has uh, to follow and to realize his promise of resignation. What will solution would it provide? No, that's not what I said. I said something else. I said that uh, constantly terrorizing people by saying, I'm resigning, I'm not resigning. I do not know where we're heading. Uh, I don't know what we're doing. The situation is terrible. We need to get out of this cycle. So this uncertainty and these uh, um, unclear directions and this lack of consistency 
in strategic positions is leading to very serious problems because people fall into despair and they do not understand what's going on. I'm not speaking about resignation here. We were not for his resignation. That was what he wanted to do. And it was based on his analysis that he had burnt out, he has exhausted his resources, he is unable to solve problems. We have three issues at the moment. Uh, externally, on international platforms, we're supposed to find solutions in diverse ways. The second one uh, is negotiations with Azerbaijan. And thirdly, to bring people together domestically, to unify and to unite their forces so that these people would not be revengeful against each other or should not insult each other, but rather would find ways of coming out of the situation. In relation to all these three directions, his analysis uh, led him to say that this he has done his maximum. And of course, it was really important for him to try to do his maximum and the issue is not about resignation it's about a ma it's a matter of trust it's a matter of understanding that relations with people was really important that the population take words that people take emotions more seriously than him and every individual he's uh, has he has his or her psychological make uh, and in this case it is impossible to have one man or one person decisions and this is a very serious problem because the incumbent president being a talented person has his own style of decision making that has led to a variety of challenges but also to a large number of successes in its own in their own time but it would be very hard to find solutions and to realize them in this difficult situation without collegial thinking and the second point people should have trust to each other because without trust we would have a very acutely aggravated situation and thirdly the leader who is the number one person should instill hope and uh, belief and uh, uh, rather than saying, I do not know what we're going to do, you decide I do not know. So this is not the proper behavior because very often meeting the various groups, this has been the style that he has been using. Uh, and I believe that we cannot afford this style of leadership anymore because currently we're facing uh, very dire crisis, not day by day, but rather hour by hour that has been in progress for 250 days, but now it's really, truly acute. There is no further option. Mr. Vartanian, you are very sharply criticizing the Armenian leadership in the Republic of Armenia. Let us put aside the issue of who is to blame, but rather let us look at what can be done. So people are, many are saying, no matter who it was today, Bismarck, Churchill, Lee Kuan Yew, anyways, there would be no radical solution, no radically positive solution to be found. If it were you or if the leadership in the Republic of Armenia would listen to you, where would they look for solutions in the given situation? First of all, uh, I would like to share, I believe, interesting information. A historian studied all the wars in the last 200 years when one party was tens of times more powerful than the other party and there was very interesting statistics uh, it might seem that uh, in 100 percent of cases the 10 times stronger country uh, would win but only 71.5 percent was a success whereas in 28.5 cases percent of cases the 10 times smaller and weaker parties were able to fight and to win if we look at the profound reasons we do for causes we would see that they were asymmetrically uh, different in their fighting practices so i believe that people are quite mistaken when they uh, cite names uh, wondering what they could have been could have done the next point is when you make decisions you are truly assuming a very heavy burden but it is really important 
to understand what's the strategy that you follow, uh, what's the time horizon, how short term and how long term your thinking is, and whatever you're doing today is going to lead uh, to uh, later. We have a very important uh, situation at the moment. On November 9, 2020, the war was stopped and we signed a document which is not uh, legally binding. It was not really approved anywhere, but we uh, adopted it. Artakh, Azerbaij Armenia, Azerbaijan and Artakh is guided by it as a document that has established a certain situation and Russia is guaranteeing the implementation of the clauses in this statement um, to a greater or lesser degree. It's a different issue. We understand that in the given situation, the neighboring country is not concealing and is openly voicing this, that not only it is aspiring for Artakh and is convinced that uh, everything is going to work out the way they wish, but is also demanding the Zangezur corridor, uh, corridor in Zangezur, and maybe in the form of political pressure rather than legal uh, measures, the return of Western Azerbaijanis and other pieces of land, etc. But the most important thing is not what he is announcing, but the fact that the leadership of this country is not hiding and is continuing uh, the policy domestically that Armenians are enemies, that Armenians need to be punished, that Armenians do not have a right for this or that. So in this sense, uh, it is really serious because no document that we may sign is going to lead to peace because if you're weak no document signed with the weak party is going to bear any value so i believe that the most dangerous thing that may happen in armenia is not that they are going for negotiations it's not about this step being right or wrong but the fact that we are guiding by guided by the mentality of the loser during these negotiations the leader is following this loser's mentality uh, with uh, when talking to the other leader. Now, so the boxer, when a, he or she loses a fight, they do not go out for revenge, but they, they can recall the blows that they had. So we cannot immediately announce that and consider that it is acceptable that Artakh as part of Azerbaijan is acceptable for Armenia. It is a major strategic and uh, tactical mistake. It has been a mistake, and I have said that this mistake needs to be corrected. The next uh, aspect of the announcement that I do not want us to spend a lot of time on it, but I'm convinced that uh, as in our attack, we have two leaders who are still in their positions after the uh, after after the war was lost, and they haven't found uh, the strength inside that to still among people that even though we lost that war, we are still strong. We are going to become more united. We are going to be stronger. We are going to be more solid as a society and as an army. And we're going to have stronger ties with the world and the diaspora. We have learned lessons and we have not just tried to find who was to blame and to punish them. But when we were learning lessons, we have also understood what we need to change amongst ourselves so that the situation does not repeat itself again. So it is about this trust that is, uh, is not being instilled in Armenia uh, is the danger, uh, either in Armenia and in diaspora, because in the end, we know that it is the spirit that uh, gave a possibility to people uh, to really survive because we have been pressurized by tens of other uh, other larger empires forcing us to convert a different religion uh, or to follow this or that path but we were able to survive because we held a whole, whole we held on to this very strong spirit so the major challenge and difficulty that we currently have in armenia and in artsakh is that the power that in the given situation is represented uh, by these leaders uh, 
I want to stress that during critical situations, leadership is really important. It seems that we lost connection, which is not surprising, taking into account that on Friday, the internet cable was damaged in the area controlled by Azerbaijan. Let us try and understand how serious this disruption is. My colleagues are trying to get in touch. Let us hope because there is still hope. Let us wait because there is still hope that we will be able to restore the connection. You know that apart from the cable connectivity, there are also other options. Uh, however, they're not very reliable. Whereas our neighbors were able, tried to do everything possible in order to ensure that there is a disruption of this main connectivity. Let us still continue staying online and let us try at least to get back. So it was an internet connectivity issue. Mr. Vakfen, can you hear us now? Yes, we're not surprised because we can understand why that is. Mr. Vartanian, now uh, among the Artsakh elite, there are people who say that concessions are indispensable, that we need to go for conceptions. It is impossible to do otherwise. We can understand, we should agree that uh, receiving food from Agdam is, has no option. And you are opposing to these people very sharply. Are you not afraid that they would say that it's because of Vartanya that we're starving today? I'm not afraid of anything because I'm sincere with my people. I may be mistaken. I may be more emotional or more abrupt in certain decisions, but I'm not afraid of anything. And this is really important. Secondly, concessions for the sake of concessions are pointless. And if you are making any con some concessions, you, you need to know what you're receiving vis-a-vis. -vis. If you are going for negotiations, the agenda or the status of which is not conducive to you, you, you need to understand and what your strategy is for you to act parallel to that. So my uh, dissatisfaction is that we are reactively responding to the ultimatums that Azerbaijan is tabling for us. That's the most important thing because ever uh, ever since the first day I came to Artsakh, I have told them, I've said that we need to be ready to fight and to openly go for negotiations. That's the option because our enemy that is not hiding its goals should understand that, yes, we are ready to meet, to negotiate in various formats, and it would be right for it to be organized by a third party. So uh, it uh, could be arranged so that both parties would respect each other and would realize that it's not just one party, but a mutual interaction. But this would uh, be a work worthwhile if you're doing certain things in parallel. The most important problem that I can see in Arta currently is that this mentality is not prevalent, is not dominant among our leadership. So that parallel to certain negotiation steps, concessions, you need to have clear and uh, a clear strategy that is thoroughly discussed domestically or internally. Let me tell you very simple things. I told, I said about this and I will reiterate it. It's really important for people to understand. The number one issue and uh, that is in our society, it is the supplies of bread, electricity, gas, medication, and the situation is exacerbating day by day. So it is not just a deficit, but it is also combined with uncertainty as to how people will continue work and how they're going to earn money for themselves because the economy is on halt. And we have a 
certain aspects that are just seen to the world partially. You can see the food or the medications issues, but there are also other issues that are quite serious and are not seen and noticed to the world. So we do not have the answers to these questions it's here internally. What is the solution? It is really an important matter because we have demands on the part of Azerbaijan, which are not again formulated very clearly and opening or not opening the humanitarian corridor via Lachin is not going to address the issues that we have currently after Vagif Khachatrian's case. Also, uh, this uh, terrible accident uh, where we lost the young uh, woman, and I would like to uh, send my condolences to the, the families of all those people who were killed in this accident and were unable to bring her body and to bury it or hand it over to their family. So this is a major. These are major issues. We do not have the answer to those questions. The so thirdly, the format and the agenda of uh, negotiations. It really requires red, uh, readily uh, standing unified society. And uh, thirdly, we had some successful and unsuccessful diplomatic steps. We had the UN Security Council session on our issue, but in this regard and in this direction, we're not taking all the possible steps we could have taken. And it is the most uh, difficult thing for me to realize that one person or a small team that is working 24 seven would still be unable to cover all the aspects. And it's true that you know that our movement is just one of the steps that we established these blocks on Stepana Gert Akna road because the police has blocked the road. But uh, we said that this was a decision not only by the leadership but also by the public. Where they share this view and they're ready to fight for it because it is unacceptable to simply open this road. And I believe that this was a very important message and this was a very important response that was uh, to be made made both for those beyond and inside Artsakh. And there are also a number of other steps that could be taken uh, because we need to come together to realize what needs to be done. Because many say, yeah, you're just very eloquent in speaking, but we need to understand what concrete steps need to be taken and need, need to be done. So, uh, Mr. Vartanyan, We Are Our Mantis, the co-founder of which you are, is an agency that is implementing very urgent and emergency projects in this critical situation. I know certain things have been readjusted in order to address more dire needs. And now, currently, which are the projects that deserve primary support and ass assistance for implementation? First of all, I would like to extend my word of gratitude to all the benefactors who have supported and assisted our projects. Truly, it was really nice and positive to do have it done not only by me, but we have had hundreds of people participating in this action. So, secondly, I would like to apologize for not being able to implement a number of projects that we'd already launched. And the most painful one is that, for example, in winter, due to our benefactors, we were able to procure 280 tons of humanitarian supplies that accumulated in Goris, and they contained very important goods that the, these were this was milk and egg powder as well as other powdered supplies that could be uh, pr uh, stored for two or three years and it was a very important achievement for us in order to ensure food security unfortunately in february when we handed over 215 tons because it was very difficult for the for, to ensure transportation. We're making use of all the uh, the benefactory trucks. We had the ratios 
uh, the rations and uh, so that everyone would get some amount these 280 tons is not enough this is miserable volume we need at least this much on a daily basis to ensure everyone's needs so we still had 215 tons uh, stopped and were unable to move it and the government did not transport it there were a number of other important things which they decided to prioritize and we were unable to import these goods to Artsakh. We uh, implemented a large-scale project of solar panels, the majority of which unfortunately got stuck in Armenia. And we had a number of other projects. Uh, the majority of which we implemented, we were, we were in the implementation stage, but uh, we had to stop them because the situation changed. I just wanted to say that in this situation internally, we have a very clear situation. We have very little uh, volumes of supplies and we need on the one hand uh, to try to import in any manner. And secondly, to correctly distribute all we have. Uh, we have been trying to implement concrete projects in Stepanakert and in the regions. And I can give you a few words about some of the projects. We realized that winter is coming and we will need a very large amount of stoves that would help people uh, to heat uh, their houses and their apartments just as it was in the, the early in the 1990s in Armenia and in Artsakh. And they need also to have timber to heat it. So in uh, various communities, people are trying to uh, build these stoves and they are, are building it, but we need a very large amount, but we're trying to do as much as we can. We also saw that it, it was very hot in summer. There was a need for fuel because pregnant women and also elderly or sick people cannot walk to the hospital. And we were unfortunately able to buy just one because no other people really sold it. We purchased an e-car that is servicing uh, pregnant women and also a very uh, sick them? people who are supporting the ambulance uh, vehicles. And now over 400 people have made use of this car. It's true that it cannot work uh, 24 7 but it is still working and i am also thankful to the individual who joined that project uh, with his own car and i extend my word of gratitude and then we also opened a canteen we can see that free of charge and we can see that there are a lot of people who cannot afford to uh, buy to pay for the food they cannot stand in the line for long and we talked to a number of private companies who from their own reserves at the same time realizing that everything is limited all the resources are limited supported and also gave us part of the food reserves that they had for us to cook something and to ensure that these people can at least have one meal during the day. So this has been working for uh, four or five days and on a daily basis, the number of these people is growing. The majority of them are children and we're going to open such a um, canteen also next to the another church we did this jointly with the church because apart from food there is also a lot of need for spiritual uh, assistance uh, we are trying to uh, distribute these meals among people who cannot come there. So we have over 300 people who already come. Uh, we soon we will have the second one next to St. Jacob's and uh, then uh, a few more in urban areas. In the rural areas, the situation is a bit better. And I'm once again thankful to all those individuals and organizations and companies that, uh, who share the food with us and also all those premises that are allocated to us uh, to 
house the canteen and the volunteers who are doing everything to do all they can in order to have a very warm atmosphere and most importantly as i already said we are not restoring uh, the church but also the school and the shelters and the storage areas and we're also implementing a number of educational projects uh, for both young people and adults and the elderly and we're going to do another educational project because starting from september 1st we are going to face the issues of how schooling will continue how universities will function we have very serious issues to face but most importantly the projects uh, this pro we need to realize that these projects are not solving the issue strategically. They still hope in people and they give them trust that they're not left alone and that uh, the, we are together and this is really important. So such projects are based on the ideas that are realized by the members, based on the ideas of the members of our movement, because we have discussions on them. And it's really important to see that this is a bottom up approach. It is not just the ideas of Ruben Vartanian, they are are shared by various people they are worked through in various working groups they come up to the committee and then they're approved and then people who are involved in various projects are implementing them we have a radio station that is working and we have dozens of projects that are being implemented in various directions both in the communities and in the regional areas and stepanakert too i believe that the most important thing that we're doing in the given situation is that we are implementing actions which show to people that regardless of the very dire situation you can still preserve your human nature your face you can come together and you can be unified in order to overcome uh, the challenges and this very critical situation so we give each other hope and we come together to overcome our challenges we cannot hear you we cannot hear you you're on mute you're on mute we can't hear you Unfortunately, I cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, then let me continue uh, because I cannot hear you. There are a few things that I would like to add. You know, I believe that this is really important. And I was wondering that no matter how much I speak about this or tell you what we're doing, people would wonder what's going to be the outcome of this situation. What do we need to do? If you can hear us, I just want to say a few words to our compatriots who are currently listening to us and following us in, uh, from other countries. I want to speak not about the situation internally, but about the approaches, as approaches of fight that uh, we are assuming. Because I receive calls, people say, what can we do apart from sending you money? Because if we send the money, what projects are you going to implement, et cetera, et cetera. When I was studying in INSEAD in France, uh, in one of the business schools that is uh, the best globally. Now, there is a very famous thing, uh, the uh, law of five calls, that uh, if you make the right calls, you will be able to uh, get in touch with the Pope or, or with the President of the US. And you need to realize that this is a very important thing because currently we are fighting for land that Azerbaijan is preparing for. It is obvious that it is 10 times stronger and it is acting as um, uh, oil and a gas uh, power and they have this oil dollars that they carry using against us there is one asymmetrical way of that we can uh, count 
that we can counterpose to it. It is our network society that is, has ties, that has links with thousands of people. And I would like to call to you, my dear and respectable compatriots, my uh, distinguished Armenians who are not indifferent and who are really concerned, but who do not know what they can do. Let me give you a few examples for you to realize how many things there are that we're not doing, but we shall be doing and we will do so what i'm trying to say is that our network power should give us strength and it will give us strength an example for example international organizations are working foreign companies are working in azerbaijan and i'm convinced uh, that the majority of these companies are unaware of the situation or they do not understand what is happening. And I am calling to you because we have prepared uh, manual instruction as to how you should write to the headquarters of all these transnational international companies and we want to explain to them that you if you have a chapter or a subsidy in uh, this country that is currently doing a genocide are you still ready to pay taxes and to realize that you directly or indirectly are supporting this genocidal policy and activity and this needs to be done at the level of the company as well as the level of various individual decision makers and this pressure needs to be done in a very nicely orchestrated manner with a lot of respect but very consistently and this needs to be done with organizations who are under certain regulators who uh, have their own internal regulations too and who have announced that they're against such policies so we there are many organizations of the kind where armenians friends or armenians are working for and i'm convinced that azerbaijan does not have that power hundreds of thousands of people who can go out and who can say that we are not asking the reg aliyev's regime but we're asking you do you realize what you're doing today we have a famous international expert's opinion about this genocidal action. It's obvious that the situation is so serious that all famous uh, newspapers have publications on the situation. And it is really important to ensure that the employees, as well as the leadership and the company generally, receive such letters. We have a possibility to put significant pressure through all the humanitarian organizations and all the humanitarian organizations that we have ties with, starting with Aurora down to other organizations that deal with uh, the prevention and the fight against genocide in different organizations. So all humanitarian organizations need to have this pressure put on them and they need to respond to say what they're doing in order to ensure supplies to this place why they are indifferent we have a lot of movements who are fighting for various things in different countries uh, for various causes and they're not similar to the pseudo uh, eco activists from azerbaijan but they're truly fighting for causes and uh, with very specific campaigns and i want to call to those uh, compatriots, to those Armenian who know Elon Musk, who know Zuckerberg, who know other uh, business people, we need to activate and mobilize these connections and we should tell them that we need these drones or we need uh, these air balloons or airplanes to be sent to food. Uh, to, to be sent to, to, we need to have food sent to Artsakh. And let us see how Aliyev is really uh, hitting them. Uh, this needs to be hundreds of campaigns and actions. And we need to raise this issue not just once, but we need to be consistent in our demands. And we need to demand from all our friends who are not indifferent. And we need to tell them, uh, people, at the moment, we have 120,000 compatriots, a population of 120 people who are on the brink of a genocide. We need to speak about that. We need to voice this issue. And this is not just 
just a formality. This is not uh, a pretense. This is the reality and they should know they cannot afford to be indifferent. Very often Armenians are shy or they feel uh, awkward, believing that it is not very modest to speak about the situation. But in this acute situation, we cannot afford being shy or uh, feeling awkward anymore because the situation is really unique and this is really different from all the situations uh, uh, that we have been within these last 30 years. Maybe in the past when Baku, uh, when it was uh, in the first war, they had the same approach because a larger country was trying to destroy us. But during these very last days, people have got confused a little bit. They do not know what's going on, who's doing what, etc. So in our information stand centers, we need to realize that Azerbaijan is spending a lot of money uh, on social media and news media. But anyway, our ties are much stronger than their money because at the moment, this is a global struggle because money cannot be stronger than network ties because in the 21st century networks and information are more important so use this five call strategy think who you can call who you can call individually who's your friend you can call and who's the fr uh, the friend your friend is going to call so that you would have this chain and they can put uh, the pressure on them so for so that they would not have for example concerts in azerbaijan or they would uh, have it so that it would be shame or that uh, the singers or the actors or the bands would lose a lot. I understand that this is uh, going to be difficult, but we can do it. Uh, we need to shout. We should not make calls, but we need to shout that whatever is happening in Artsakh at the moment is a genocide and then we need and that we need to stop it together. Mr. Vartanian. Let me change the topic a little bit because I am conscious of time. Within a month in Yerevan, we were going to have municipal elections and we realized that we're not going to uh, vote for the execute, chief executive manager of Yerevan, but this is a political decision. You have never hidden the fact that you're supporting Aprelu Yedgij party, a country to live in. But do you have any call that you would like to make to people who are supporting you in Armenia. First of all, I agree with you that I believe that the elections in Yerevan are going to be really important because the period that we have found ourselves in uh, show that this is not just a mayor's election, but an indication as to what way the whole public is going to take because uh, the first option is when people are really indifferent and they say, why should I go there and nothing is going to change? And it is really dangerous. The second one is let us uh, vote for mayors that does not politicize uh, all this. Whereas the th third group will realize that this is a vote that is going to be cast in a very difficult situation. I have kept saying it and I will reiterate it, that today's leadership and today's political party uh, party is making political decisions not as a political force only and these decisions may be liked or disliked they're not working as managers as good or bad but unfortunately they have already stepped into the domain of national and human values and this is not acceptable to me and i spoke about this a few months ago and this is unacceptable to me as an armenian that all you are doing as armenians you believe that this is um, acceptable and you can find it permissible to do and you're doing it um, I will try in any way uh, through an announcement, a call, a support to ensure that everyone realizes that we have a life and death situation in Artsakh. Secondly, we're realizing that uh, no issue in Artsakh will be solved without the support of Armenia. I need to assist to ensure that people show up at the polling stations and they cast a vote on the elections day and they give the vote to the person 
person or to the political party who they are sure, by the way, this confidence is really limited, that we're going to take a different route. The future that today's ruling party has proposed is not the way we need in the future. And it's true, today I know both Mane, uh, and uh, Ms. Tandilian and Mr. Arakelian, both in Armenia and in Artsakh, have worked together. Uh, we have worked together. We have covered various routes and we have gone a long way during the last two uh, years. And uh, I trust them and I am going to support their activity, a political party that has an idea, an ideological framework, a vision that I share, because Artsakh and Armenia is the Armenian world that we have no right to divide or separate how Artsakh and when Artsakh is going to unify. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different question, but Artsakh and Armenia are very strongly tied to each other and we cannot cut these ties and uh, the decision has been made that we are not uh, uh, accepting those people who can say that Artsakh can be part of Azerbaijan and in this sense obviously and very openly we're going to support all those political parties who are going to have the same position. I'm sure that out of 14 forces it's not going to be just the Apredu Yerkirk political party. I know a number of other parties who have the same ideological framework but I'm going to do everything to assist that these elections are both ideological and strategical uh, rather than only economic and I am going to do everything possible to support Aprelu Yerkir and other political parties who are going to come together to change the situation and uh, to put serious pressure on the leadership of Armenia to uh, refute the mistakes that they have already committed and we need to come together to uh, work with the diaspora Armenians and the outer world to ensure food and other supplies here in Artsakh. There are a lot of things that can be done and they do not want to open the brackets here and also in relation to the negotiations we need to understand that there need to be synchronized approaches between Armenia and Artsakh and from this perspective it is obvious that the power and the leadership in Armenia is not able to fully fulfill its um, obligations and it is not uh, on solving the problems in Armenia. So uh, it is also uh, damaging, uh, causing damage to Artsakh. So from this perspective, the situation is not about the links that I have with Aprelu Yerkic, but it's uh, the fact that all these things are intertwined. And if we're speaking about the possibilities of overcoming uh, a much stronger country, we need to strengthen the ties between Armenia and Armenia and come to uh, with Artsakh. We need to do everything externally, internally, uh, and we need to introduce changes and we need to do it not individually, separately, but coming together and doing it 24 seven in a joint manner. Mr. Vartanian, can you hear me? Yes. And the last question, Mr. Vartanian, only in a few days, uh, it will be September 2nd, uh, the Independence Day of Artsakh. Years ago, we would have great celebrations and festivities and on that day, and the moods are completely different at the moment. What is the call that you would share with Armenians? How can we show that we stand in solidarity with Armenians living in Artsakh. First of all, I would like to say that we do not have a right to fall into despair. We cannot say that everything has been lost. Nothing has been lost. Nothing is 
over and we should not afford to think that uh, all these issue, issues will be solved within a week or within a month it is going to take really long the fight is going to last long and i'm sure that azerbaijan has a lot of challenges too and their uh, leadership too uh, uh, things are not brilliant with them either they have a lot of challenges in their country no matter how much they pretend that they have won and that they are happy with this victory that's not true and people have various challenges in their lives and i would like to primarily ask everyone not to have just a short-term perspective that oh the september 2nd is not the day we're going to celebrate we are going to celebrate september 2nd for dozens of years to come and i'm convinced that this is going to be one of the major celebrations uh for the armenian world can you hear us mr vartanian I would like to call to you to celebrate September 2nd as a holiday, as a testimony that we are together, that we're united, so that people all over the world in different countries can see us standing uh next to Artach and I know that many people already have uh this disappointment and people are not uh interested to go out uh, but it is really important for us to show physically and on social media coming together that Artach people are not alone that we are standing to support them and we need to make use of our most important strength and about the power unfortunately our technical challenges hindered our communication a lot as far as i can understand can't you hear us can't you hear me it's on. very good this time we will wrap up but since we may uh, make an active use of this format to communicate with you we will come back to it because we have a lot of things to say and to hear thank you very much we were talking to ruben vartanian a state and public figure who is currently in besieged artach